The Lord be with you. And also with you. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Welcome to worship. Before we begin, we have our monthly temple talk from our council person. So I'll, I'll invite Amy up front. Good morning. In case you don't know me already, my name is Amy Fetzinger. I'm a member of the church council and currently serving as the council secretary. Um, something most of you probably don't know about me already is that I'm a distance runner. And that time going out early in the morning and running out across the desert and that space and time to think and pray about what's in my mind is really important to me. And yesterday while I was running, I was just reflecting on being a leader in the church during this challenging time and wondering what message I might be able to bring to you that might offer some sense of hope and encouragement. And while I was running, I started feeling as though um, I was getting some answers to that. I started thinking about um, a couple of things that have been happening in our congregation over, over quite some time that I think uh, is an indication that God has been with us and preparing us um, for this, this uh, time of challenge that we find ourselves in. I was thinking, for example, about uh, how it's been about five years now since Pastor Jeff came here, and one of the things that he really tucked into when he came to our congregation was uh, taking a look at our finances and figuring out the places where our finances were strong and healthy and the places that they really needed some serious attention. And if you remember just a few years ago, or sorry, just a few months ago, actually, we were able to bring you a balanced budget for the very first time in at least a generation in this congregation. So. Um, it's a real good news, I think, that we're starting from a, a place of financial security as we enter these hard times. Something else that some of you might not be aware of in this congregation is how hard Pastor Jeff has been working behind the scenes. Um, something you might not know is that um, he's been negotiating higher uh, rates of, of uh, income for our, our rental properties, our parking lot, our uh, the the uh, agreements we have with other congregations that use our church space, and of course our new partnership with Lutheran, Lutheran Social Services, all um, added up together, that uh, revenue is, is more than $100,000 of stable income that we have in this congregation now, something that will continue to bless us during these challenging times as well as um, on into the future. And even things that happened um, in the fall that seemed sorrowful at the time, like um, staff changes and things like that, um, in strange and unexpected ways turned out to be a bit of a blessing because our congregation responded wisely and calmly and took the opportunity to, to uh, reduce our spending a bit and set us up for, for a better financial future. So um, I don't know if you've ever tried running when you're um, overcome with emotion, but it's not easy to do. It sort of stopped me in my tracks a bit to think um, how God has blessed us and prepared us um, during the past weeks and months and years for the moment that we find ourselves in now. And I hope that uh, that stops some of your fears and anxiousness in, in your tracks as well, uh, because we are um, blessed by God in this time, as always. So um, as we look to forward, um, God only gives us one day at a time to live, of course, uh, through these times, but your council is also working to look a little bit further ahead in the future as much as we're able. Uh, we're going to be meeting with the bishop this week to put some plans in place for an interim pastor and um, looking at the next steps ahead for calling more permanent pastor here. And we will also be um, hoping that the congregation will help us during these uh, times with keeping their, their finances current. If you're able to continue your offering, um, uh, able to make an extra gift out of a sense of gratitude, we'd be most grateful so that we'll continue to have a strong and healthy congregation here in every sense. Um, I hope you'll Join us in praying for the, the health and well-being of our, our members, our church community, and our community and our world beyond. Thank you very much. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Good morning. Uh, before we begin, just a little bit about our worship. Uh, on the website, there is a, a link that you can click on and open up a copy of the bulletin that we're using for this worship service. It's also um, attached to the email that you received that also had the, the video for this, uh, the video link for this worship service attached to it. So um, please click on that so that you can follow along and join us. I invite you to rise as you are able. We gather for worship in the same way that we live the rest of our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. Let's join our voices together in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O Lord, no one on earth knows the hour of your return. Only keep us watchful and awake, that we may always be at work in your kingdom. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. May we see you. The reading is from Mark chapter 13, beginning with verse 1. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in heaven in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. you are with us in this time. We pray for a sense of your presence in our gathering together now. We 
pray for a sense of your direction and your wisdom, your comfort and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. So it happens on a regular basis that the assigned readings for any given Sunday, whether it's the Revised Common Lectionary or the Narrative Lectionary, are these serendipitously appropriate lessons. But really, end times? End times teaching now? Really? This is, this is Jesus talking about the apocalypse. At least that's what it sounds like. Really, maybe there is something here for us for today, but it's probably not the kind of gloom and doom that this lesson may lead us to or sound like at first. We gotta remind ourselves of the setting. There's only one place in the narrative, in the telling of the story of Jesus and his ministry that we, that we left something out and we'll come back to it at the end. It's the triumphal entry. So for these weeks leading up to Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry has already happened. So Jesus is in the midst of the Passover festival and the controversy with the Pharisees and the scribes and the struggle that builds and builds and we know what happens on Good Friday. This is the setting in which Jesus is speaking to his disciples and telling them about what's going to happen. We hear this language and it sounds like it's uh, apocalyptic, except it's not exactly apocalyptic. Apocalyptic literature and writing usually uses fantastic beasts and images like that, and that's not what this is. And it's not exactly prophecy either, because Jesus is saying, this is gonna happen next. It's not, it's not off in the future. It is more in the realm of future telling. So it is apocalyptic in some regard. It's prophetic in some regard. But it's present tense. That's what I think is most important for us today. That we hear that Jesus is telling the disciples that something, some bad things are going to happen. And he tells them what some of those things are. Don't put your hope in the great big stones and the big edifices that your leaders may bring and build. Don't put your hope in the stone of building because that will all fall down eventually. Even this place. And he says there will be lots of things that are tumultuous. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars and, and these things that sound terrible. And they sound terrible to us. But imagine how they sound right now today in Syria. There's no rumors. There is war. There is all of there are all these things that Jesus says are going to come. And then he uses this this image at the end of the of a strong man defending his household and and uh, the slaves being charged with paying attention through all the watches of the night. Jesus is talking and uses the exact same language as the watches that come just in the next chapter and or two as the story of the, of the passion is lived out. He says, so, so be on your guard because if you knew when the strong men would come and attack the house in the night watches, whether it be at evening or midnight or cock crow or dawn, just a week from now we will hear those same words. In the evening he gathered with his disciples in the upper room. At midnight they went out to the garden for Jesus to pray. And it's at that place where he told them to keep awake. And then at cock crow, Peter denies him. And then at dawn is when everyone has abandoned him and the Pharisees and the leaders of the temple take him to Pilate to be put on trial. These exact same words in this story are telling the disciples about the, the struggles and the troubles that are right going to happen right now. And I think that, that Jesus is actually talking about the troubles and the struggles in every age that we face. Because it's a, it's a funny little quirky thing that in every generation since the time of Jesus, every generation believed they were living in the end times. Every single one of them. Things can't possibly get worse and, and this has to be the end. Well, it doesn't matter if it is or not. The reality is that Jesus said, God is present with you in that. 
God is present in these things that, that are going to be hard in the evening, midnight, cockerel, and dawn. In these things, you'll experience loss and fear, and I am still with you. We all struggle with the end. We struggle with the end, but the Part that's really important here is Jesus says right in the middle of this passage this but this is only the beginning of the birth pangs well that sounds terrible and rough but it's not the end it's the beginning and there's hard parts to it but what comes after that beginning something amazing but what comes next Jesus is giving a word of hope here and uh, I was on a so lots of meetings are happening by Zoom and Skype these days. And so I was on a Zoom call with some colleagues studying this lesson. And one of them who'd learned to use one of these cool new tricks, wiped the screen of all of our pictures off to the side and then put this big picture right up in the middle and said, look what I found, I like this. And it was a picture, uh, kind of a cutesy picture with uh, one of those uh, image of somebody wearing one of those sandwich boards that normally says the end is near. And it says the beginning is near. And he had a big grin on his face. It's cute, but <laughs> is it helpful? In this time when we're distancing ourselves and afraid for what comes next, the beginning is near. And these things that we see all around us that are frightening, terrifying even, God is still with us. And this is not the end, but the beginning of what comes next. Whatever that looks like. And I don't mean to make light of how difficult things are right now. Not at all. Because Jesus wasn't making light of what the disciples were going to endure when he said, evening, midnight, cock crow, and dawn. There's hard stuff yet to come. But it's not the end. For a little humor, I found this quote, too, um, from Woody Allen. If it is the end, this is like, he said, I'm not afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? <laughs> well, in the middle of this, this troubling teaching of Jesus, he uses this, uh, this great, very gentle image, which is, which is really powerful and meaning, meaningful for me. He says, consider the fig tree. When you see its branches becoming tender, you know that it's spring. You know that something good is coming. When I was early in ministry, I had spent most of eight years living in the Midwest, and I wrote a newsletter article, and the title of the newsletter article was, <clears throat> Grass is Frivolous, But the Trees Are Not Fooled. Because it happened almost every spring that we lived in the Midwest, that in the, in the early spring there would be a warm snap, and the grass would actually start to get green again. And then, as soon as you hold out hope that summer's almost here, it'd freeze again and kill all the grass. So it took a couple of times of experiencing this to notice, oh, you know what? But the buds on the trees aren't coming out yet. It's those larger, wiser, stoic images where we might find some hope in this. The grass, the grass is frivolous, but the trees My grandfather was a stoic Midwest pastor. He was very, he was known for being unflappable. And he had this low baritone voice and everything he said was in this book. It was a very tired sermon by the end of the sermon when he would preach. But he was very, very uh, calm all the time. And one of his pastoral responses, and I heard it multiple times when I was growing up, one of his pastoral responses, which at the time, as a kid, I dismissed and thought, I don't know, what a load. But he would listen to what someone was struggling with. And oftentimes he would, he would go, mm hmm. <laughs> and then he would say, this too shall pass. This too. Pass. 
It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean that it's all going to be happy and happy joy and rainbows, but, but this too will pass and we will know light again. And we will know comfort and we'll know the embrace and we'll know community and gathering together in this place for worship. This too will pass. This week, this time, let us be confident in that and hold on to what Jesus says and know that when Jesus says, keep awake, it's keep awake and look for the love of God that is around us in one another, even in this time, even in this place. And this too shall pass. I invite you to rise for the hymn of the day. Lord. 
of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true true God from true God, begotten, not made, among being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We live for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Together we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O Lord, there are many who claim to have special knowledge of your plan to redeem the earth. Do not allow us to be led astray. Keeping us focused instead upon all the ways that you are calling us to live out our discipleship here and now. Eternal God, hear our prayer. prayer. We take our clues from nature to know what season it is. May we be as keenly aware of other people and when the time is right to share your word and mediate your grace and love to them. Eternal God, hear our prayer. God, we pray for all veterans who face the distress of combat, the judgment of many, and the subsequent injuries and traumas which impact them to this day. May we care for them to the best of our ability and not allow them to be forgotten. Eternal God, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask your healing power upon all those who are dealing with addictions and impulses difficult to control. We ask for your healing on this world and all the people that are sick from the COVID-19 virus all the people that are sick with fear. Send your spirit also to those whom we know are suffering. Today especially we pray for Celeste Morton, for Chuck Janitis, Mike Manura, Bill Hanshay, Jerry Larson, the Harbaugh family, and Connor Rankin. Eternal God, hear our yeah. prayer. We celebrate with all those saints who have gone before us, who have worked to renew the church and promote the living faith among its members and advocating for working people's rights, bless all who follow in the example of those who have gone before us. Eternal God, hear our prayer. God, we pray that you will bless all for whom we pray this day and keep us alert to the ways you are working in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us join in praying together the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A reminder that while we are not meeting in here in, as a community for worship, um, things that are important about our gathering, like stewardship, are still important. So uh, I invite you to consider mailing in your pledges, or um, if you would like to donate online, there's a QR code on our website. You can scan that with your smartphone or um, or a donate here button where you can just go through the steps of donating online as well. So um, please remember us in this time. And also this coming Sunday after following worship from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. The sanctuary will be open for anyone who wants to come and have some quiet and private prayer.
be some music by Sophia Rankin uh, during that time that's very contemplative and meditating for us. As we go out from here, may God go with us. May God go ahead of us on our path to show us the way. May God go behind us to encourage us, above us to protect us, beside us as our companion, and within us to show us his love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Thanks. 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 See you, you God. God.